Okay guys, we need to make sure this is, uh, the threads are clean on this. Clean them with some brake cleaner, get all the oil off the threads. Then we're going to take our red thread lock. some red thread lock on these threads. Alright. Put a drop of oil on the seal. There we go. Just to lube it so it goes in good. Put her in. Torque it to 60 foot pounds. I can see why they want the thread lock on there. The vibration of this engine is pretty good. Yeah, let me get that. Wash and repeat on the other end. You can see that one has some oil in it. I have not cleaned that thread. Actually, let me flip the head around. It's a lot easier to work from this end of the bench. Let me position for us. All right. Once again. work around the camera here. Let's see. Red thread lock. Okay. Drop oil on the seal. Where's the camera? Good Lord. she goes. Yeah, we'll spin it in with a regular wrench this time. With plastic. Sixty foot pounds or pound feet. All right, those are done. Don't forget the thread lock; very important because they will. I have never uh, not forgot it, but I would imagine they would, um, because of the vibrations of these engines through the cylinder heads and everything. I imagine they would work themselves loose and then you'd have one heck of an oil leak. And don't forget that's the full high pressure oil from the high pressure pump. So it's 3,000 pounds at times. And uh, it can be 3,000 pounds anyway. So that's a lot of pressure on those seals. And if they're just a least bit loose, I would imagine they would be flooding the engine compartment with a lot of oil. So be sure to include the thread lock. I want to talk about what we're going to do next. That's injector cups. There's four in this. These are stock international injector cups. The difference between these 
and the cheapy ones I believe these are solid brass whereas the other ones are brass coated steel is there better or not yeah when you're this far into the engine I would use OEM parts either Ford or International either one's going to be uh, full brass and uh, we'll go over how to put these in in just a second if you look at these cups this vertical surface right here and this vertical surface right here actually engage the cylinder head I don't know if I can show you but we'll try looking down into a port an injector port let me get a flashlight okay you can see the machine surface on the above one that's right here uh, and down below at the bottom of the cup you can see there's a machine surface down there there's also a vertical groove oh gosh right there there's a hole there's a lip right there and that's where the sealer is going to seal against so you've got to be very careful where you put the sealer otherwise you're going to have a leaky injector cup and you'll end up with fuel in your radiator fluid and radiator fluid in your fuel depending on whether you're running or stopped because the pressures differentiate um so we'll go over how to put these in uh, i'm using riff raff's tool it's very good especially on the vehicle because most of them have a uh, a mandrel that you mount the uh, cup on and drive it in with a hammer this one uses the injector mounting bolts and you press it in it takes much less room because with these cab over design trucks the back of the cylinder head which would be back here or back here depending on where you're at um, makes it almost impossible to swing a hammer in there so this design tool and we'll show how we use it works wonders I've uh, I've put several sets of cups in with it and never had a problem so and never had a problem reaching them in the uh, old body style or the uh, 99 and ups 73s uh, which this is going into so let's uh, set up and do a couple of those okay so let's go over how to install these injector cups this is what we use to put them in with it's actually a uh, bearing retainer uh, you use it in transmission work also like I said we're gonna put a bead on here and a bead on here and then we're gonna use the riffraff tool to put them in with kind of important to make sure everything's as clean as you can get it so um, We'll take a paper towel, wipe this down with rubbing uh, denatured alcohol, also wipe the bore down, and then we'll start. So let's get that going. It has an o-ring on it to uh, hold them on. Just push it on.
This stuff has a kind of thick formula to make sure it kind of stays where you put it, which is good. Okay. And try to center it and drop it in so you don't lose any on the sides. And the arrow, well, where are we at? The arrow goes towards the valve springs. So. You just screw these in hand tight. And then the manual for the tool says these go down and they get tightened to 35 foot pounds. That makes them bottom out. Let me move that camera a little closer. There we go. So we'll bottom them out with a regular wrench and then put a torque wrench on it. Go to 35 pounds and that's pretty much it. Most important part is to be careful if you don't. Uh, wipe all the uh, retaining compound off on the sides because that's real easy to do by just kind of not putting it in careful. Like I said, none of this stuff is real hard. I just don't know if anybody ever covers it that well. Let's go down to 35 pounds. Jeez Louise. You hold that button down, man, it just zooms off. Alright. Not much on this torque wrench, I'll tell you. Getting close. There we go. Alright. You'll be able to tell exactly how much uh, you miss the hole by looking down on the board and seeing how much is wiped off. Because we sure don't want to leak. All right, let's take a look. Get a flashlight. That looks real good. There's a ring right around the top of it. So we'll take a paper towel and wipe the excess off. And Let me get this over so you can actually see. There's a ring of the sealer right around the top of the cup. There we go. Too much light. See the ring right around the, there, around the top? That means it's got a good seal. And you have to assume the bottom one's good, so be sure to put enough on. That's it. I'm not going to go through installing the rest of them because it's more or less just wash and repeat. We'll pick up after all these are in. But that's how you install an injector cup. Now just do this eight times and seven more times and you're good to go. Also if you're doing this in vehicle, this uh, 620 requires 24 hours for full cure so you have to let them sit that's not going to be a problem for this since we're building this engine and it's not even in the truck so that cure time will not be a problem okay so we've got the cup mounted there's one thing I forgot to mention about these this wonderful tool I showed you incorrectly the last time and then I fixed it and didn't show it um, you see, this is basically um, at the bottom of installing it. If you pull this all the way to the top, you don't have to worry about losing your coating on the uh, sidewalls, you know, jiggling it, putting it in, wiping all the coating off of this 
diameter here. By bringing it up, when you put it in and put the bolts in, it's going to self-center. And when you push it down, let me move this over. When you push it down, it'll be centered and you won't lose any. So let's do this one. Just to be sure we're clear. Move this over a little bit. That'll be able to spin it. Okay. So there you've got a pretty crazy coat on there, a little thin right there. Okay, so try to eyeball it as good as you can. You don't want to wipe any of that um, Loctite off as it goes down the bore. And by doing it this way, like I said with that install her all the way up, you'll uh, not have that problem. I just dropped that down a, a hole in the head. Hang on. Okay, let's pull that bolt out of there. Hmm. Alright, pull that bolt out. Like I said, this centers the mandrel, and you won't lose any coating going down. So, let's do this one. Reset the wrench, okay. Almost there, there we go. All right, let's pull her out and see how we did on this one. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right. Okay, we're doing valve springs. Um, I did these two, these two here, already 
so I can make sure I can actually use this crazy valve spring compressor that's really not too great. It's an OEM tools. I prefer to use my old style C-clamp, but I don't have a set of offset jaws, and I can't get enough compression to get the springs off. So we're stuck with using this crazy thing, and I had to figure out exactly how to uh, go about using it. It always feels like it's going to explode in your hand. It's uh, driven by a ratchet. Let me back off here in case it does come loose. <laughs> what you have to do, crank this down to compress the spring. We've got a not a very good bite on it. Let me back that off and get a better bite on the spring coil. Like I said, this is not the best way to do this, but it's all I got right now. I'm going to order me a... I'll have to order another set of jaws if I can find them. Or a new spring compressor. So you compress the spring like that. You give it a tap. And the keepers fall out. All right. Use a magnet. Retrieve the keepers. That's... Oh, where is it? Okay. That's the valve keeper. This is where it gets kind of hairy. Feels like this thing's going to explode. This is the uh, original valve spring. What we're doing is, uh, because of we're upping the compression and performance substantially, it requires heavier duty valve springs. So that's what we're putting them in. Installed height is 1.78 inches. And the way you do this, it's not really hard. That's the old spring. This is an exhaust valve. Slide the seal off. Don't tear it. They shouldn't tear. They're pretty tough. That's the cylinder head. So what we're going to do, take this micrometer, compress it all the way down. This is a valve spring micrometer. Not really expensive. Put the keeper on. We are replacing the, uh, excuse me, the retainer. We're replacing the keepers with new ones, just OEM keepers, cheap insurance. I think they were seven dollars for thirty-two of them. So, yeah, it's not that big a deal. If I can get this one to go down in there. There we go. Well, that one's actually down too far. Okay, well it'll come down. So, and we're going to expand this. What do we got going on here? There we go. That's better. I hold it out like that. I don't know if you can even see that. Let's get over here. So we've got the new keepers holding the retainer. There's no seat on there because, uh, I mean, excuse me, there's no... Um, seal on there because this inside diameter catches on the inside diameter of the mic so you can't you can't use it so you just have to subtract that difference because you're going to put that back in and you wheel this down take all the slack out of it spin it a little it up tight. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Let me work from this side. It's a little better. Spin it a little. Snug it up. Spin it. Snug it up. Snug it up some. Okay. So, that's our actual measurement. And those numbers on the outside of that thing are a rough guide. They aren't uh, real accurate. But you can make it accurate. So what I'm going to do is take a picture. Make sure.
sure it's good. Yep. Okay. Make sure we don't have any more slack. Nope. Okay. Now to get this back apart, you have to compress this micrometer back down. Well, there goes your reading. Hence the picture. Okay. So we'll screw this back down. Recompress this down. Don't let these keepers fall on the floor. They're brand new. All right. There's the retainer. Now, there's the picture of our micrometer. So we're going to match it up on here. Then we'll mic it out. So it's 1.9. Is at 1.9 right at 65 1.965 there's our duplicate gosh come on focus there we go there's our dimension now that says reading that 1.965 so let's get something accurate. I use this thing. It's a Harbor Freight Special. I checked it against a Mitu Toyo um, mic. It's within a half a thousand, so it's good enough for valve springs. Um, 187. Yeah, 187 it looks like. That's nice. 186. Well, let me do that one again. 1864. Yeah. We'll say it's a 187. So I've got. is exhaust two. I make a chart. This initial height is one eight seven zero. Now since the shims go underneath the seal, we need to include this thickness. So let's get a measurement on that. Okay. They've been running RAF 42,000s. Right at 40, 42,000. I don't even talk. I can't see that. I'm sorry. I'm not used to working with a camera. 43,000s. 41. 42. 42. We'll say 43. Oh, 42, I'm sorry. So, where's my pencil? We'll mark the seal thickness as 0 0.42. So let's do a little math here. Okay. Let's go back to the calculator. Our first dimension was 1.87 minus the seal. Subtract that 0 0.042. Okay. Equals that. And our installed dimension is going to be 178 minus 1.78 is 48 thousandths. So I need a 48 thousandths shim under there. Uh, the shim pack came with 15s, 30s, and 60s. So we're going to take a 15.
and a 30. By the way, these are Comp Cam's parts. Let me get that so you can read it. There's the Comp Cam 30,000's part number. The Comp Cam 15,000's part number. Thirties here. Let's check. Is there two shims together? Forty-three thousand. We need forty-eight. We're five thousand under. Let's try another shim. I've gone through this pack and they're pretty close. Look at there, fifty-one, forty-five. That's a little better. We need 48, that'll give us 3,000s under, which is okay. We're shooting for 178, that'll get us really close. Put our valve seal back on. You can see that valve in there. Put that in there. This is a new Comp Cams 910 spring. We'll, uh, Load this into this crazy compressor and see if we can't get it in. This compressor is about about useless. I bought it many years ago and I haven't really ever used it because it. I tried it one time and went, oh good lord. It's not the. It doesn't give you the safest feeling using it. I'll tell you that. Let's pull that shaft all the way out. Try to get it in there snug. Wow, that's a horrible fit. Let's see what it does. I always feel like this thing's gonna just explode in my hand. Never had that feeling with my old C clamp one. You just crank it down and it's good to go. This is actually made for working on replacing valve springs while the head's on the engine because everything works from the top. You'd bring your cylinder up the top dead center and so the valve don't drop. Change your springs. Which is what I bought it for. When I used to race, you could change springs if you needed to. See if we can get these keepers in there. Tight rope with this thing. I think we're only going to cover doing one because this is not the type of tool I would use to do this work, but it's what I've got. I think I think it's another case of I've lent my set of jaws out with my other compressor and they never came back. But we'll get them in. This is much more time consuming than doing with a uh, C clamp style valve spring compressor. Almost there it is. Wow. That's scary. Okay. Then you release the demon. I mean the pressure. <laughs> oh, 
watch the keeper make sure it's actually not pulling out with you now technically that one's done I always throw a rag over it give it a whack with a rubber mallet to make sure those uh, are actually seated that's good okay that's one so we're gonna do the rest of them it's not real difficult work it's just kind of tedious get your measurements uh, I build a chart on my piece of paper over there and so I can track it and we'll build a actual blueprint document for this engine so we can track maintenance and track how parts are running it's good to know this kind of stuff um, I got one two three five more to go and rather than bore you with the same doing the same job over and over and over you've seen it once that's it's just wash and repeat the important part is get your shim pack as close as you can to what you're what you need and you'll be good all right I'm gonna come back when these are all done one thing I forgot to mention since we stripped this head down for the hot tank to get really good and clean you'll notice that underneath each intake valve there's a missing um, freeze plug frost plug core plug whatever you want to call it there's 13 16 plug and they came in that um, uh, federal mogul pack that I showed you earlier uh, we're gonna put those in I missed one over here I'm gonna have to go back and put it in as we go so I'm gonna roll it flat put that plug in uh, make sure if you if you do take those out uh, make sure you put them in or you're gonna have one heck of a mess on your hands um, other than that it's the same as doing the other springs let's get this done here hey guys um, I thought we were through filming on this cylinder head we were doing, but I just wanted to take a note. Um, you know, we measured all of the intake valves and the exhaust valves so far, and they've all been around 183, 187, something like that. So check this one out. It's a bit different. There's a lot of guys that will measure one valve and um, set the shim pack according to that one valve. I measure every one because, uh, you know, this one had new intake seats put in and not all of them are the same. Some might be, you know, a few thousandths either way. This one's like, uh, I think, about eight thousandths deeper, which makes the valve stem eight thousandths longer on the spring side. So we're going to have to change the shim away from we've been using the 45 a 30 and a 15 together for all the rest of them but this one's going to be different so uh, let's check out and see what we get all right this one comes out to be oh, looks like it turned off Yeah, 1.8. 8, it looks like. What about 1.82? So that is a little bit longer than... Uh, What we were using before, as I mentioned, I can find my pencil. There it is. Pencil. So this is three, and it was one point eight. 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 Eight.
eight eight three, I think. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Eight eight two. Eight eight two. I don't know what eight eight two. There's a seal on this one. Whoops. Get it in the right hole. Yeah. Seal thickness on this one is. Gives us a dimension, installed dimension of 184. So, how many tables? 1.84 minus 1.78 are desired. Grand total of 60,000. Hmm. That just so happens. I have a 60,000 shim. Wow. So. It pays to measure each one. Because, uh. If we had just put, you know, 45 in there, we would have been 15,000 short. Which is, uh. Oh, that's what I would think. Which is not not desirable. We have a floating valve. That looks really thick. Let's see what that is. Sixty-five. Sixty-two. Sixty. Sixty. Exactly what we need. Okay. So we'll put that in. Put our valve seal back on. Put our spring in. By the way, I only did this last one with. The living dangerous valve spring compressor. And I had to chase down keepers twice because they popped and went all over the garage. So, got on Summit's website and purchased, I don't have it adjusted yet, this valve spring compressor. Let's adjust it for it actually. Works the way it's supposed to. It's a cam lock type. You can see the spring is compressed, the keepers are exposed, and you see how long it took. 
that's the style that I used to have. 50 bucks. Excellent. I highly suggest getting one. So you put the keepers in. That's what I was saying. That other Johnny Be Dangerous, uh, Living Dangerously valve spring compressor takes about three times as long to get this. This is hard to do around the camera, but we'll do it on this one. You just hold them with your fingers and release the cam. Done. Tell me that's not sweet compared to that other one. That's crazy. Okay, for on on board stuff, let me back this camera up. Let me check those keepers, make sure they're good. All right. So that is the way I like to do valve work with that C clamp style valve spring compressor. This thing is wonderful. It needs just a little bit more. It's a little too tight, but uh, you get the idea. And we're going to finish this head out. Uh, and that'll complete this head, actually. Uh, we gotta, did I just put that one in? I sure did. Okay. I'm going to take that one back out and put the uh, frost plug back in. Which is not a big deal. So far, we've forgotten every one of them. So we'll go back and put that one in. And then we're, I finally got my... Um, piston ring compressor in so we'll switch over get this head done put it back in its plastic bag put it on the shelf over there and, and uh, we'll wheel the block out and drive the pistons in today too we're going to get some work done finally yay alright thanks guys